call the meeting to order or, or present and one electronically, I need to read it. Yep. Shirley. First item on this morning's agenda, DJ Chisel, Landfill Director, Rural Waste Coordinator. So last week, uh, we had a meeting with John and the uh, Rural Waste, from the Rural Waste Committee and Mark. Cindy, you there. Uh, just going over uh, the registration, how that dashboard is working, and uh, it's been great. Uh, so all we had when this first started was about five to 600 people we knew were using it per week. Um, we're thinking it's 1,400 on the dashboard. Yeah, it's 1,400 um, plus. Plus, we've got a couple hundred people that have registered and have not used the service. We still have about 32 percent. Still have a couple hundred people that haven't registered but are using it. But the dashboard kind of gives us a total of about 1,450 people using it. Yeah. So a lot of people in the county are using uh, the service. So we're trying to figure out how to save some money. Um, and we brought up one would be Lincoln County recycling, getting a couple more dumpsters, and hauling all the dumpsters themselves that save thirty to thirty-five thousand. Mm -hmm. Is that correct savings? Is that like Offset by the that'd be just for what we pay right now for reliable. Okay. So one of the sites that wouldn't be including us paying our wages, right? Not reliability, our extra. Um, one of the sites does not have recycling on site. That would be yeah. that'd be the only place they would haul a dumpster that they couldn't pick up recycling in on the way there. Um, we're thinking about maybe. Taking the auction site and moving that to the landfill. Uh, it would be about five miles different for people to drive, but we could open that up from eight in the morning to 3.30 in the afternoon, five days a week for the patrons uh, to use instead of just Tuesdays. Um, so that'd be an option. Would that be any? Resident to use it then? Any person resident that had a placard. So, uh, with this registration now, uh, we're going to move to like phase two and issue like a rearview mirror placard uh, to hang so we know if they're registered or not. So, the monitors were here at the meeting and they need to know who's registered, who's not. Sometimes when they type it in, they don't have uh, internet service, so it doesn't tell them right away. Um, so drive. they register, they I, get a placard, I don't think and then they might come in. So if they come to the landfill and they show us that placard, they can dump for it. Turn on my feed rate, 30%. You know, bag garbage on Friday. Almost where we need it. Really? But it still stinks. Well, so that'd be an option. Where it's going to take a while. He goes, Another issue that came up was the usage pattern and possible schedule change. Yes, um, and I don't know if a person would want to do it all in one, January 1st, July 1, when a person would want to do it, but possibly a schedule change to do one dumpster per day uh, of the week. So we'd move a couple dumpsters, we all look at the sheet. Locust would stay on Monday. Possible change would be Tuesday for the Bluffton site uh, once a week. Wednesday, Locust site, so that'd stay the same. Thursday, the first and third Kendallville site, first and third Thursdays, and then second and fourth Thursdays at the Fort Atkinson site, and then Friday, the first and third at Locust again, and second and fourth at Ridgeway, which Ridgeway is already second and fourth uh, Friday, so that one change. And then Monday through Friday, uh, the Winnipeg County landfill uh, would take over that auction site. Wouldn't have to pay for a monitor. Uh, we monitor that uh, all the time. So, and this allows us to cut down to one monitor instead of two. Yeah, yeah, one monitor, two part timers, uh, once full time retires, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then if 
if recycling hauls it, then they cut down on hauling there. We would have to buy probably another dumpster for sure. Kayla is looking into that. Uh, minimum 30 yarder, if not a 40 yarder dumpster. Right now we have 30 yard dumpsters for Winnesha County uh, that we use, the brown ones. And uh, those work great. They, they have to open up the back door so the monitors see everybody that's going in uh, and throwing the trash. Do we have, have we done a, a tipping test yet on a 40? No, waiting for them. So we have recycling bins at the landfill, waiting for recycling to come out. I have a 40 yarder there, waiting for them to come out, load it to see if we can get enough uh, degree angle on it for them to dump it. Because they are like two foot longer. So I don't know if they can tip them up all the way and uh, be able to dump it uh, cleanly. How? Frequently, we end up with two trips in the summertime going to the locust site. And if we had, and they're putting a, that's a 20. That's a 20 yarder usually, so yes. We take, with that dumpster, if we take out the larger dumpster, then we're eliminating possible trip charges and so forth again, plus that extra, that extra whole round cycle. Mm -hmm. And it would be a better, better move. Yeah. And on a holiday yet, there still might be, you know, like say holiday, Memorial, Labor Day on a Monday. Wednesday, we might still need a, a double dumpster, but yeah, uh, bigger dumpster would help out on that. Yep. So on a call, on we're gonna we could probably cut that in half. We could probably save half on that, which would be fifteen thousand maybe. Yeah, as long as they're going going there, there to pick up a because uh, they're going to recycle down. down. Yeah. yeah, we're dead hitting on on um, numerous trips. Yeah. I think so, Kayla said Tuesday they're going up to Locust right now. They go and pick up all the bins Tuesday, I think. Um, so now they can pick up Monday, Wednesday, and every other Friday pretty much. Just put it so then if we get down to just one person, we're probably going to be saving 30000 40000 on labor to uh, or not. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Yeah, money maybe because he's a he's a part timer, so he doesn't get insurance okay. anyway. So, no. but right, it's just a part time wage. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's twenty and say ten on the falling. You could maybe, but the thing is, if we see from the data collection, when you look at the map of where the people mm -hmm. are located and where it is, it makes all the sense in the world on this site. Data Change. changes. Because now we know, you know, uh, pretty darn accurately. It's amazing what we collected in 60 days. Yeah. Um, IP did a great job in that dashboard. If anybody goes on it, uh, it does give us a lot of information. John, uh, can you can you uh, pull or have uh, pull that up so people can see that? Well, I don't actually. I can't do it right now. Okay. I'm just trying to get Shirley. She might want to say something. We can't get her unmuted for some reason. Can you hear me right now? Yes. Oh, I just chat uh, put in chat my question. I just want to make sure I heard you right. The people, the rural residents who are registered and get a placard can also use the solid waste site on those days where their site is closed and they might have garbage piling up, especially in the summer. Yes, as long as it's household bag garbage. Yep, and have the placard. And they Great. have to be rural residents. Rural residents with the placard. If they don't right. have the placard, we will have to charge them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And what we do to separate the rural waste dumpsters that they haul in from the rural waste people bring it in themselves, uh, we'd have a separate uh, coding number on it. Uh, so like right now, we code it at 60 for the rural waste dumpsters, and we print off a ticket for each driver. We don't want to print off a ticket for every single person that comes in. It could be 100 people a day. Uh, so we'll just have a different number, like 61, put it to 61. Then Ben will get, or Tony, you guys will get two separate bills, one for the rural waste hauling, and then one for the rural waste that people come to the landfill. And for the public, at this point in time, we would not be charging for the placard. It's just a Correct. registering. So they know the, uh, the monitors know if you have registered or not. Yep. But what we have found out in having this whole process of data collection 
you know, we've eliminated a certain number of people who were coming from elsewhere mm-hmm. that are no, not rural residents. And we have eliminated, obviously, some from reports, some commercial businesses and so forth that were dumping into it also. And so now we're receiving some ish, some uh, complaints back from businesses in small towns that are having their dumpsters filled with other people's trash that no longer can go out and use the rural waste. That's always going to happen. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. That's going to happen. It is. Oh, now security. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, so, no, right, right. I mean, you're not a rural resident, and you're right here from some county or I mean state. You, know, you shouldn't be paying, when you should count, you shouldn't be paying for your garbage. What do you have, sir? Just real quick, in my time out with Russ Jowart at the Locust location, for many, many years now, he's done a fabulous job of preventing commercial drop-offs anyway and people from out of state who might own land in Winnishie County. And he checks with pretty much every person that comes up to that site. So kudos to Russ Jower out at the Locust location. They do a good job. So what's the timeline for implementing this? Um, I'd like to get some feedback if, you know, with the changes of the days, you know, if anybody's going to be I would think you would want to make all the changes at once. Exactly. Incrementally, because yep. having to publicize and trying to change, oh, now this month we're changing this day and this month we're changing. 100%. Yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd like to do it all at once. I don't know on the, the dumpsters. We have two county dumpsters right now. Um, we'd like to get three, possibly four. So two more. I don't know what timeline on those are. Um, but I don't know if 1st of January is too early. That's what we kind of talked about in the meeting. Um, to switch everything over the and day. And the dumpsters aren't cheap, but I think last time right. we calculated within a couple of years of not mm-hmm. paying hauling fees, they pay for, they themselves. Pay for themselves. Yeah. But you'll have an upfront mm-hmm. cost. Mm-hmm. About what we're, and the cost would be about what we're saving. But first, you by know. changing this program, right? The first year was pay for dumpsters, but that also gives us the option if we have a, an excess of appliances that need to haul off, we can uh, load and take those out to scrap ourselves with that with that larger dumpster easily. Right. Yep. I mean, if yep. We, have a, we can use it for other yep. other other, other, yep. other purposes. Other yep. things we can use it for. Yeah. If we happen to have a and excess of spare ones that refrigerators and so forth that we need to dispose of that 40 yards nice to be able to tuck a bunch of those in and send them off to get them crushed and get them gone yeah i think the only thing that would be potentially useful i think at this point in time would be if we're going to go with placards to get them ordered and start using them so Mm -hmm. they're not always having to double check every time somebody pulls in uh, it just saves a lot. We could of time. get that going sooner and not yeah. change the schedule until later. And yeah, the way you talked about it, even the monitors could actually hand them out to people that they know have already registered. Yeah. So they wouldn't have to come in here to get them or someplace else. And if they haven't registered, they can, they can register right there and hand them a placard also. And I think, I think John has solve some of the problems that are in the process of solving some of our internet connectivity at these sites. So that's probably, what do you say, within 30 days, we're probably covered on most, on all the sites or yeah. most. Yeah, even the Locust site, which we thought had good cellular coverage, maybe doesn't. And so we're adding a, a camera system there and also, you know, Wi-Fi. So that'll, that should get better. And with the placards, uh, letter works they're going to give me some samples because we talked about getting some bigger ones because i had two and three ace by two and seven ace we thought they were a little too, small. too dinky uh so mark and steve were like let's see some different sizes so uh they're going to give me some samples um, and that works better than trying to register all the different license plates because a person might bring garbage and they might have two or three vehicles they would bring in that way they just grab their placard for the one they're that's what we're finding out with rangers and everything. Yeah, they don't have license plates, so um, you can't type them in. So the placards will be quick visual. And if we have 30 yard dumpsters, the back doors, they have to drive right into the back door. The monitor can see it hanging from the rear view mirror. 
God say the two and maybe three quarters by about six would be. I think of the handicap placard size or maybe oh, a bit smaller. Yeah. We just don't want them too big so they you know block their view, you know, of something. But yeah, uh, they're gonna give me some different sizes and I'll show them to the committee and we'll go get them ordered. And they're gonna be simple, they'll say rural waste on it in a bright color. Mm. That's it. And if we change some aspect of it, then we may have to go to a different color yeah. down the road. But if we may decide that we need to make some other change, we can do that. The, the but, placards aren't that expensive. When do you think we want to make this change? What's your suggestion, TJ? Um, we were kind of thinking January 1. Uh, that gives us, you know, October, November, December. To get when the info out, would you want to get the placards out now? Before? Yep, placards out as soon as they come in. Yep, get those out and then change and then for alert everybody to the proposed changes. Right, changes effective January one. One, and we need you probably have a notice requirement for your current haulers. Yep, sixty days, uh, and then the Bluffton site. Uh, that's a sixty uh, thirty day notice. I talked to Brian Sweska. About moving in on Tuesday instead of Monday, and he's fine with that. Tuesday's kind of slow for them at the Bluffton store, so uh, that'd be fine to have them there. Yeah. So, no, really, the only questionable thing about when you could do this is how long it would take to get the new dumpsters. Correct. Because if you get them ordered and they say, oh, it's going to be six months. Yep. Then we're going to, I mean, yeah. yes, we have two there that we can use, but, but we, could, we could probably do it with a 30. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, we got two thirties there yeah, now. Two thirties now. Yeah, and especially if we're starting making that changeover in January, our usually our loads are lighter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we we even if we couldn't get them for six months, we still we still be, would have a workable system. Correct. Yeah, two mm -hmm. numbers. And recycling does use those bins occasionally for hauling scrap metal and different things. Yeah. I'm uh, picking up things from places, so yep. it's not like they're not useful they're very useful but yep. so i think the, when they get a quote on dumpsters and then yeah i move ahead and kayla should be looking at that yep the goal so, might be january 1st assuming the dumpsters can be yeah so i wouldn't want to make any definite right, right now um but yeah but within the near two weeks we should make a decision yeah. so that we have more meantime yep exactly we should yeah. have a Austin is the only site that's being closed. How are those residents being affected or, or communicated with if that's going to happen? So that's our rural waste monitors will um, inform them. We'll put on the radio uh, website and they'll be affected. They'll have to come to the landfill. So we aren't really closing it. We're moving it to the landfill and then uh any rural waste person be able to use it five days a week unless it's a holiday from any site from any site any place in the county yeah as long as it's bag and trash yeah. remember that that is not residents of austin mm -hmm. because they have a right. trash collection it's rural residents that yeah. that, but, and the site is not in the town of austin yeah. it's out of the county shop outside the city limits it's north mm -hmm. on 342 yeah. yeah for some people it'll be closer and some will be a little bit further yeah exactly some people really they're, like they're all driving either way they're all driving to that one yeah and so you some like problem with russian people using it anyway because they build automatically on their water bill for the garbage so yeah in town a lot easier to send it out for your house than it is to all yeah. somewhere else and i think opening up five days a week uh excluding the holidays i think a lot of people will be happy because yeah you know in all i've never used it before i'm not currently registered but i will now then no, I I use it. Unregistered. Use it. Okay. no i haven't used so, it i'm not a user because it there wasn't one close to me but i had to go to the landfill so that would be convenient for me bonus for you yeah, yeah. right all right well, let's proceed forward with that yeah. thank you and um, you do it the drug right. yes. Next item on yeah, the agenda, Michael Kinney, our county engineer with the road project update. Yeah. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. I see they got the rails all poured on that bridge, except for the very coaches. Nice. We're getting here, so that uh, I haven't seen them. 
to look at the problem. Or not good. So she's got a person. Get registered. Excited. Wait for your wait for your flyer. Good. Right, uh, right into it. Um, uh, I would give the annual report. Uh, that was approved. I talked to the with the DOT. She said we were on the top third to get finished. So that was interesting to me. Well, uh, mostly st mostly staff. And the, I walked into the situation there. Um, bridge five, the rails are for for Thursday and Friday. As Dan mentioned, um, still no exact time on when they will be finished. Um, engineers' offices, that's the same as last week. Uh, bridge 208E mitigation has been purchased. As seems last week, except now we have a uh, section 44 permit has been awarded to us. Uh, we're working on the DNR permits, the Army Corps permits. Um, they are separate in this case, so we'll be we'll be working that out. W14 overlays will begin after the neighboring projects in Howard and Alameda counties are finished. Uh, Bruce 313 is open, and crews might be out there to work on channel work, putting in riprap and putting mm -hmm. the the creek from from debris and it's non flood related. Where's that one? Uh, it's 225th. It's right on the bend. Um, 225th, and I can't remember what the East West Street is. Mm -hmm. But uh, Marks is out there. Mm -hmm. uh, By Ridgeway. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's the one we stopped at. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. South and West Ridgeway. Speed study for Mental Hospital Road is ongoing. Didn't get to it this weekend. Um, subdivision data, same as last week. Um, IT, same as last week. New Ridge Out of Seal project is placed. We have been in talks with Farner to, as to when they think scraping is going to happen. Um, I have not heard uh, anything definitive uh, on that. Equipment malfunction. Uh, the diesel pump and creek board has been fixed. The paperwork, the DNR has been filed, and um, Blackhawk Environmental came in over this past week to, to do some tests. Uh, no evidence of contaminants uh, spilling into the soil. So uh, we'll do the follow up paperwork for that uh, this week. Mike, are you getting feedback from folks out there on Canoe Ridge as to the the uh, auto seal with uh, this product now with some of the dust issue gone and so forth. Are you getting comments? I am not getting direct comments on that. Um, I was getting some about the time we took you out um, and nothing since then. Most of the comments have been coming actually through my wife, but that's another in that story. It actually has turned out pretty good. It looks, yeah, it looks nice. Most of the gravel has now been Pushed off the shoulders that access and work in. And, work yeah. in. and uh, yeah. I, there's no virtually no dust right now. Uh, so so I, I think it's turned out well. The only thing would be where you talked about the transition on that one end. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a bump there. Yeah, and I think it, it, it's actually been working itself yeah. down the last I checked uh, um, compared mm -hmm. to what it was when yeah. it started. So so does that look like a take care of that? Yeah. <laughs> looks like a positive of uh, for go ahead on some other projects. Yes. Um and uh working on a home project this weekend and happened to be in Skyland Quarry and plenty of material for more auto steel projects. So nice. So those are those are nice to give you five, you know, hopefully a minimum of five years extended time on that. On that pavement so and just so for the history of it uh, three four years ago we we mm -hmm. contracted with brewing because the odyssey needs a specific type of gravel and we contracted with them to crush gravel to mm -hmm. our specific spec and store it there and we used it for some other projects on the way but we still have some stored there's what you're saying we have 
thoughts stories they're not just some okay so that's good <laughs> yeah that's good this is yeah. That's we've paid the gravel cool. we've paid for and it's just yeah. being stored yeah right? I'm, I'm looking at you getting used so um as a good idea um so it makes the projects appear cheaper <laughs> yeah so, you know the gravel part of it what percentage is the cost of that based on 25 percent maybe or not no, it's, it's more than that, that. what is what it's probably be, 60. yeah i was say oh, yeah. Oh, so so three quarters so so it was good investment. So yeah. So um, as well. Back yeah, it's a, it's a <laughs> special view on right. the board, but you'll claim that the, the board made a good decision. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, it's not, it's not, it's not, yeah, it's it's on your chest. Yeah. 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 It's 60, 60 would be a good number. Um the okay. negotiation I'll talk to John Anderson today on that. Denco has done the practical work operation last week. Um, um how was that priced out? That was so much product use or that was a, a per mile. Um we we did it uh they had come in and they had inventoried all of our our roads and um they uh, did a lot of the front end work for us. Our guys were busy and um, they gave us a price per mile on, on their projects. And that price per mile came in um, cheaper than what we would do for Dura patching. And so I said, okay, um, it's not the same, no. um, but that was a, um, that was kind of where I, I was at with the pricing on that. And I said, look, if you guys are ready to go, I, I want to get this sealed up before winter. We have the, the cash to do it. Let's do it. So I just felt as though they missed a lot of cracks. On on the W46. Yeah, that one is a discussion piece. Um that was sure. they were they got a low bid on, on that specific one. Um they bid that low because we wanted to just in where they had previously slurry sealed and they had defined it as the quarter point so there's there's a difference in what was negotiated with what we thought we were getting and what they thought they were going to do so w46 is a little bit of a we'll have a discussion there Good. um but that was that was not exactly what we had wanted um and then Minus that one, there was a small spot at River Road, a small spot in Highlandville uh, area that I just need to brush up with uh, with them and, and discuss on that. Maybe maybe getting a credit or something for next year. So, um, but otherwise, it was done. It was done efficiently and and seemed to be. What did you end with still? Yeah, I mean, as far as that goes, that was the W forty six. Unfortunately, might have. That's probably just a miscommunication on our part because they had said quarter point and that was kind of in the quarter. It's a slurry, but that didn't necessarily get transferred to the crews. It's just a because there's a lot of their tire actually travels on and has fair amount of tracks in it. Yeah. So what they did put in is useful. So I don't want I don't want I don't want to berate them too much, but it was they gave us a discount on the price and it came in less than what we have to go get. For, for yeah, I, I didn't know if it was bid on the size of the crack or how no, it, it was all bid. They got us. They got us under. So we need to stay at one hundred twenty thousand before we go out to bid for everybody. Um, and so, if we just did that one crack that we thought we were going to get, that would have kept us under. They kept us under, but that was the crack they did was not the right one. So that's kind of so again. Okay. It was next year. Things. Yes, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, it was, that's part. I am partly to blame on that. Learn you know, Yeah. Make sure, make sure that uh, I can pass down what I want from programmer to crew. Uh, and I think it would, if I would have had more follow through on that, I would have maybe been better on that. Um, FEMA is. The category C 
debris removal uh, from Nepal, Iowa should be finished either now or shortly uh, today. Uh, storage and ultimate disposal uh, will probably happen after the debris dries out and December will probably burn it. Is that being burned at that shop? Um, I can't remember where it's close ish to the uh, landfill and then they're going to dispose of it in the landfill. So I'm not sure if you're that's what you mean by the county shop. Um, um, so oh, he's probably Frankville blacktop okay. right by the landfill there. We have five yeah, or six five acres. Or six acres. Okay. I bought that okay. chunk here a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. So I know because we get complaints from one of the residents down by the county shop where we were burning mm -hmm. all that debris we took out of the this is all low out of tone. Yeah. 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 Yeah, this will be. I just didn't want to get my phone calls. Yeah. And that, and I think that burning was in that sand pit around the corner from yeah. the county shop. What that three three years? Years? Oh, yeah. yeah, that's that's in, talking about Freeport there. Yeah, uh, no, this is this will be out close to the landfill. And this is the debris from <clears throat> lots of bridges or just uh, all of them. Yeah. All of the bridges uh, transferred there and pick it up with a excavator side down, side down, takes it to the site. Does that feel like that? Well, the burning bridge, twin bridges down there. Yeah, that. a lot of people were interested in that. So, yeah. <laughs> so that has to be burnt once we cleaned it out. It's yeah, we'll be getting yeah we'll be getting uh, FEMA funds to get yeah. that. So and it has to be yeah, it can't that be we have to receive the bank there then. When we, uh, it should be receded. So I we, I did, we did that or we just well it depends on what's what's there right now. I mean if it's if it was grass that has been you know, taken out because lack of sun and everything else from the debris or no, like ripped really out. Go down into the, get into the river. I'll look at that. I usually it's not too disturbed, but um, they might have been in and out enough enough that that we should go see it for sure. Mm -hmm. um, here, oh, I attended the uh, this. Iowa DOT District 2 meeting at Spring Valley Golf Course south of Algona on Wednesday. Um, it was, uh, we talked about utilities and things uh, like that. Uh, I would expect that here coming up in the Sixth County meeting to be a discussion point. Estimates and quotes for the Ridgeway shop improvements have been received. Um, when the work, the work will be done this fall yet? And floor heat will be provided where current cold storage exists. And I'm going to insulate up the area so that we can keep that heat in. Uh, that'll keep floors drier. Um, it'll allow the equipment, the diesel, to run right, right when they started. They don't have a, a song of a warm up time, things like that. Did we take bids on that? Or? We did. So, what was the cost of that? So, concrete. Uh, Concrete came in at uh, concrete and the lower uh, portion of the shop insulation came in at 35,000. And then we have uh, 16 or 17,000 for the, um, the boiler and the, and the pipe system on the floor. So that's where we're at right now. There might be some more work to do on the insulation that's and I don't know if it is, it's not prescribed, but um, higher than three feet above the ground, we haven't worked out that insulation yet up to the, up to the roof. So that insulation work still has not been, it hasn't been negotiated at all, so, but we got the, we got the big piece. Speaking of the, what kind of condition is that in on this part of that building? Uh, we're talking about putting a new roof on that. Uh, is that, that, that is cost. possible. That ain't an on this cost. Though, no, it? it's not on this cost. So, is it electric heat in the floor? It'll be uh, hot water. Uh, hot water heat, boiler. Yeah, boiler. I know that previous engineer and board talked some about they kind of were not doing improvements at Ridgeway because the. the Placement of the shop in the district is like not near the center. It's they have talked about 
I'm wondering if they would move the shop at some point, but I'm guessing since you're making improvements there and we did improvements in Kendallville that kind of help with the. So uh, on that, um, my, I had heard rumors of the same thing. You probably have heard more than me. Um, my thought is that Locust Shop and Freeport Shop need new shops. So before we get to Ridgeway, um, we address something that, you know, Ridgeway Shop's relatively nice. Uh, so yeah, I don't no, know. And that. that was never the complaint. It was just that it was like in the corner of the road district. And so there was more travel, travel time. Plan, yep. But then part of the solution to that was to make some improvements at Kendallville so that the people who were working in that area could start there rather than go to Ridgeway and have to drive all the way up there. And that still happens that they go to Kendallville. So yeah. I think that those Kendallville improvements helped that situation out. So. Um, and the SS4A grant meeting and email notes um, of note of the Madison Road and Highway 52 intersection was probably highest on their weightings of, of projects to do. Um, and then the B32 to 20th Avenue that we've discussed in previous meetings was also um, a high, highly weighted project and a couple others what what would the improvement be that has not been discussed um and i don't want to say i'm taking a back seat but they're leading with what they think should be done um, well this is feds so um they have a they have a consultant kimley horn a big engineering and architecture outfit um they did some work for us on that sort of plan that and yeah, they're getting up to apply for some grant funding. To keep yeah, the Kenley Horn is the feds have basically hired them, so it's not it's nothing that that is a dangerous should. intersection. So it would be good to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they come up with some kind of solution. I don't know what it would be. But. Well, I mean, a little bit lengthening up the flat portion would be a, one way to approach it. Um, <laughs> And then I, this week I did a first pass at a budget review. I want to um, work with staff and and amend our budget, um, perhaps, and and look, go through the five-year program uh, more strategically. So I began the process this week. I'll have a meeting with staff uh, looking at tomorrow morning. Um, and then just a note, some change orders on bridges 313 and 317 pushed the cost of those projects to the upper end of our contingency. So um, 313 was to expedite some, some uh, work to keep it open. And then 317, we couldn't drive piling um, very far, so we had to color up the, the piles. And, um, and then as I mentioned before, Six County meeting is coming up this week. This is going to be hosted by Howard County and uh, the Cape Town Tap. They're doing it here in Winnipeg County because the place in Howard County is open uh, in the morning. So that's uh, what time again? I'd have to look at my email. Uh, Six County Ten o'clock. Usually like nine thirty or something. It's 9.30 dawn at time and 10 o'clock meeting. Okay. Don't want to miss donut. Yeah. Never want to miss donut. <laughs> they always pinch in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Does anyone have anything else from like? Oh, we did made more complaints about it. some of the uh, internet work up north of the coral. Wasn't it usually? Yeah, there are some. There have been some complaints. Um, I just saw some pictures and they look like some very large stones that are still on the ground that are still sticking. Yeah, they're plowing. And I don't know, I mean, other than if if they're left like that, if, res if, if residents can take pictures, send them to me so that I can, but I, until, a lot of times, you know, they'll, they'll be left there and they swept off by the company Perhaps not timely, but you know, eventually they do get pushed off by the by the 
utility company off to the side of the road, but it's it's not always when when residents want or need them. So I, you know, well, I, I don't. I understand you can't be out there policing it. No, I I, I can't. They, so, um, had had something out to, out east happen the same same thing. So, two weeks ago. So. All I have. And fiber will be. The new look is. Oh yeah, out. I just decided. <laughs> yeah. Happened to not shape a little bit, so I thought I'd get artful with my face. So. <laughs> change is not bad, Michael. Not at all. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, I don't have anything else. Okay. So, thank you. So good. Next item on the agenda is a miscellaneous item. We just discuss recruitment for the higher revenue recycling supervisor. So, as what came up in an email with Ben and I is in order to advertise this opening in the journal that's produced by the Iowa Recycling Association, we need to up our membership again. And I would propose that we renew our membership. It's 175, I think. I think we need to renew that membership and advertise this in that journal or that newsletter. I think that's a good idea. You should have a membership in that. I think so too. Yeah. So I wanted to talk to Kayla and have her do the membership thing. I'm assuming that they've paid it in the past. I mean, they obviously we pay it, but they coordinate the payment. I don't know why we didn't do it. Yeah. I can call if she can get it renewed once once it's renewed we can contact them to get the ad put in there but i don't know if she should probably be the one who contacts them to get it renewed and if it's a, might be more than 175 since it's late or maybe we just get you pay 175 and we only get nine months so maybe that works out i guess i don't know as long as she knows we need this done asap <clears throat> So you'll talk to her about getting it renewed and have her call us once she's done that so that we can okay. get the ad to them. Well, she'll need to do it like today. So we can get the ad. I'll stop it early tomorrow. Wait back. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys had appointed us to mm -hmm. look into, uh, I think we're scheduled to go up to view another uh, recycling operation in Fillmore County, uh, planning on one who been to Almakey and Howard County. And Steve and I went out and with TJ has been with us on this and went out and looked at what we're doing here. I really had no idea <laughs> about how our operation is working too. So we've got lots of ideas. And I think we'd just like if you guys are fine with us pursuing moving ahead with that and getting recommendations would be good. Any information you can find and bring to us would be great. Okay. And so I think we are also going to be getting together. Uh, Scott's obviously on medical leave, and so there's kind of a lack of um, who to go to. Uh, they're down positions, and so they're really short staffed uh, at the moment. So it's understandable. So maybe if uh, it's it fine with you to help. Because if things it is going to be coming forward, Scott kind of pre warned us on that. that there's is. a lot of people getting to the retirement age and yeah. ready to be done. So um, <clears throat> now it's the time to make some potentially make some changes, changes. in that. And so uh, I think maybe we're going to be meeting with uh, scheduling a meeting at some point in time with Kayla, uh, who Scott said would be kind of in charge for the most part. Yeah, that's well, we we've been out there and, and through the facility pretty much in detail and with with TJ. TJ is in this whole mix because it's everything that happens in recycle affects the longevity of our landfill, which is having him involved. I think is a great uh, a great asset as well as the he previously did the appliance recycling. Mm -hmm. so we're, <clears throat> 
we'll make a we'll make a series of recommendations and bring it to the board when we're when we're ready ready with that. But we need we've got more we research. Need, yeah, we need more research, and with the Fillmore project seems to be a a really good option to look at to see if there are some innovative ways to do some things and, I, and perhaps there are some things out there that we're doing that we shouldn't be doing or we need to be making some changes uh, and i think it's, it behooves us to look at this whole overall scope so that when we try to hire the new director we can we're, we're, we have a better handle on what we really want them to do what and we have, yeah. What we have, what we may want to, what we may want to change, what we want for recommendations. So we're we're going down that path because we don't want to set a new hire a new director and set them up for failure. I have a quick That's question. Go ahead. Uh, can you add to that discussion in the future? That in the interim, would it be? in our best interest to at, get into an agreement with TJ to be an interim director until we can find the right person. No, we can't. We've kind of talked about that a little bit. And that's he's not a county employee, so we, we're just going to leave that alone. He's. Oh, then Andy's here. We make yeah, yeah, maybe we ask him too, but you're going to have two different boards. And, yeah, he it should can't be, be a 2080. You, you could do a 2080, I suppose. I mean, it'd be similar to what you've done with the um, rural waste. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you contract with the agency to provide him as your as your interim director. And um, that may be a short term solution out there. I mean, you've got you're shorthanded. You probably don't have the expertise with Scott out that you would have otherwise. Um, maybe that's something to run the table. Um, I mean, it, it can be done. It'd be up to the agency, obviously, to to get on board with it. But uh, legally, you could you could make legally it work. Legally, can. Okay. When's our next line bill meeting? December. Oh, I think it is. So you yeah. might not want to wait that long if you're going to. Oh, yeah. But Scott is still. Uh, but at least uh, Scott is still an employee and still the supervisor, so, even though he's on the year. Yeah. Right now, right, he'll be back. I think you could have. I think you could have TJ assist with the supervision out there until Scott returns or you know, on a short-term basis. Um, and from what I'm hearing, that may not be a bad idea. I think we could, uh, with the solid waste, we could send out an email and see if there are people would be in agreement or think. Or have an objection. We would have to have the board. We'd have to put the board decision, not just. Yeah. You can't do it by email anyway. No, you know, but I mean, you know, a meeting. You know, it's a meeting. You can't do it by email. It's got to be a special meeting, I guess. Yeah. But at least. We do that. We do have a leadership issue out there currently with with the employees. There's, I mean, with Scott gone, there's a lot of confusion appears from our our visits out there. I think we need to have, you know, <clears throat> and the county could. I mean, you could even, if the agency thought it was necessary, I do some kind of reimbursement or payment to the agency for TJ's time that he puts in. That's become be part of that 20. Yeah, make sure the landfill board's more board, board. Yeah, yeah. Okay. and right up to the board. Spend it his time. Yeah. 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 That's the number one issue right there. It's got to be addressed first. Excuse well, me. What's the, what's, what's the number? I think it's a good idea. Well, to other parts of the board. In the that. meantime, surely. Sure. I, I just couldn't hear. There's a lot of talking when it comes across online. It's a little bit jumbled. Mark, what is what's the number one issue? I couldn't hear that. The number one issue is it have to be up. It's up to the landfill board whether they want to share them or not. Is the number one issue. It ain't up to us to tell them they have to. So it's the landfill board's decision. Of course. So the landfill board could call a special meeting to address this because this is a timely issue. That's exactly what would have yeah. to happen. Yep. 
you want to get together? I can talk to TJ. We may want to have some interim authority. The board making it clear that, like when Mark and I go out there with and with with and TJ or not, that we have the ability to make some direction on some things that may that are obvious. Andy, what do you think about that? I think that would be useful. I, I you know, in terms of the day-to-day -day operation, you guys obviously aren't certified the way Scott is, but on the other hand, uh, you also directly supervise that department. Um, there isn't an interim layer there right now, so I think uh, having uh, Mark and Steve have that, that authority would be a good idea. Especially over small safety issues that could be yeah. really room. Well, we, the last thing we want to have is some kind of accident or violations or anything like that, whether it be safety, environmental, personnel or anything of that nature that puts us at risk and if do you we, think do you think they can just make a motion here authorizing mark to steve to provide supervisory uh, or to provide the uh, guidance and resources necessary to uh in scott's absence i'd make that motion i'll second it if i can <laughs> How about Shirley? Shirley. 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 Yeah. I second. Shirley seconds. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 She carries a man. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. All right. We got that one done. Uh, I, I will say it's been educational and quite informative to the extent of what they do out there and it's just a lot of moving there's, parts. There's a lot of moving parts out there. Yeah. A lot of moving parts. And I I feel bad that we're understaffed. I mean, you know, we need to figure that out. But the change is coming, I guess. Yeah. Potential. There's a lot of behind the scenes things there too, checking the markets, making well points and all that stuff. That's a lot of things people don't see. But um, other legal questions for Andy. Um, the spectrum thing, where are we at? We're growing up that loose on the food pantry. It's on the list of things to do. Okay. <laughs> right now, the uh, right now the sheriff's office is keeping me plenty busy. Thank you very much. Understood. Um, yeah, because there's that lease, and I think Toys Go Around needs an, uh, an amendment to the uh, attachment. They have an extra room that we need to put on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, they're on the radar. And Andy did provide a amendment to the estate of <coughs> farmland that they are. They haven't signed yet, but if they sign it, we'll bring it to you then to get on the next or on an agenda to get it approved. The Freeport. the Freeport farmland that the renter is deceased, but that they that you said that you think his heirs or estate the estate could, could rent it at the same rate and for the following year. Yeah. We think they're interested, but Andy yeah, sent it to them over the weekend, and we're just waiting now to see if they. I got an email from uh, one of the sons saying yeah. that they launched. That's what I kind of rec I said you have to. You could do it for the following year, but if you don't want it, then we got to know. So we put up the lease. But I said it's got to be at the same price. It cannot be at a lower price, otherwise it goes up. The yeah, all I prepared was an amendment to substitute the tenant for yeah. the estate yeah. for the. Uh, yeah. 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 That's the way I talked to them too. It sounded like that's kind yeah. of the way they wanted to do it. Yeah. Then I have to talk to you on that thing, Claire, too. Uh, yes, I saw an email the other day on that. Um, the the litigation that got filed, um, there's a ICAP has retained counsel, and I'll get you the contact information on that. Um, Related to that, I think I mean, next Monday's agenda, let's talk about recording board meetings. It's time.
that that wasn't the same clerk and the same clerk. Okay, yeah, that was the uh, information. Right. And Dan won't do that. Put my phone on his machine. He says, "No way, no, not going to happen." So step down a little, figure out a response. Okay. I don't have anything else for you. Can you can you clarify what you're talking about right now, Dan? Or Andy? There was a uh, public records request that Dan and I need to discuss. Looks like All right. Thank you. Probably Thank you. Court appearance. What's it? Probably easier than upstairs. Usually. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Uh, consent agenda. Got the minutes and the claims that you've been going through here. I and started on that. I have one question on claims that I've never seen before. It's kind of a, what is the uh, um, he ate my favorite card. The ten thousand uh, dollar to the city of Florida. What is uh, what is that? Met that's our Metro Net membership. That's it used to be fifteen, so it's come down some. The hope is that at some point after they get right now, they're leasing out some of the dark fiber, the unused fibers. Mm -hmm. um, that help off, offset the uh, cost of maintenance and locating and all that stuff that goes along with having wire in the ground. And so if Decora ever pursues their fiber to the home project, they are planning to lease a significant portion of the unused fibers. So then we hopefully wouldn't have a membership fee anymore. So that's the best metro then. Yeah. You call them dark fibers? Uh, the unused, yeah, dark unused. fibers. <laughs> that's right. That's what I've heard. Up the dark web. Yeah. No, it's what I. I'm only repeating what I've heard IT people. Yes. To call them. Yes. The unused, unused fibers. <laughs> Probably should take a look at our insurance deal too. Pretty soon, to figure out what to get that. Yeah. Built back up. What we're going to do there. Yeah, we did. I mean, our increase this year was all going into the side yeah. fund, and it still isn't. Recuperating them, you know, what it should. So we're going to have to take a look at that. Mm -hmm. Talk about insurance. Is there uh, time to take the spectrum uh, metro building off? Did insurance? they base that off or not? Um, I have haven't checked into that. I'll have I'll check. That. I don't want to. You don't need to be paying on that. Well, no, the tax years paying insurance on a building that we don't have to like call anything. <laughs> I know Tony's been working busy trying to get all the other stuff stuff right. transferred, uh, yeah. whether it's the utilities. Uh, sure. He just did a thing with the elevator company, and uh, yeah, so we're working with IT to keep the. We're still issuing issuing the key fobs because they tried to order some kind of equipment so they can issue key fobs and they couldn't get the equipment yet. So we're still doing that for them and in front and so on. So. I'd get, I would guess insurance hasn't come across the radar yet. No, no I okay. mentioned it. I'll make sure we get that. Yeah. Would someone like to take action on the consent agenda? The motion to approve the consent Second. agenda. Second. Motion and second to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Here's unanimous. <laughs> The Madden deal that looks pretty good at this thing. Yeah, so we're right into I mean, the, the good news is that it sounds like we might they might cover, but you don't have to put any of their rescue plan money, money in. And the bad news is that they aren't going to do it till after October 1st, but you know, we'll just have to get it for yeah. a while. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. For the public, that was on the Festina sewer project. Getting a forgivable loan. Uh, it looks like we're going to get approved, but the amount of that is Somewhere still going to be fifty and four hundred thousand. Yeah, and so you had pledged up to three hundred thousand to offset it if they didn't give you a forgivable loan to keep the rate reasonable for the assigner residents. So 
if they give at least 300,000, then you don't have to put any ARPA money in. If they give up to 400,000, that just keeps the rate a little bit lower for the residents. So. Yeah. Nice. Quick and question about. Oh, go ahead, Shirley. Um, just a quick question of the six county meeting Thursday. How many of us are going? I plan to. I own. Mark, I am. I own. I own. All of us. Might, so, might, might either be combining or our town. I'm not okay. sure. So, so it looks like we'll have us. a quorum. So it needs to be a public meeting, Ben? It always is. Okay. So that's the 10 o'clock out at K Town Town. The engine hosting engineers uh, post it as a public meeting every time. So great. Yeah, what, Thank you. What, whether you're going to one show up or all yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, public. Set the date and the time again on Thursday. Well, it's 9 30 is donut time and 10 o'clock is the meeting. K Town Tap, six county meeting. I don't think I've ever seen public therapy. It's, it's not, it is. Yeah, it is. Is it a public meeting? Yeah. It is, yes, public is posted as a public meeting. Yes. Not particularly exciting, but. <laughs> Is there an agenda posted for that? It's usually posted by the hosting county. Which is, not which, is, county. which is Howard County. Now, since it's being held in Winnishie County, I, they may send it to Michael to post too. I don't know. I don't know what the rules on no, that. It's their meeting. Yeah. Their meeting. You can, Howard County. You can also. You can also contact Nick Risman, the county engineer in Howard County, and I think that he would share that agenda once he gets it finalized. All right, committee reports. Mm -hmm. Got a uh, mock meeting this afternoon, the CSS meeting on Wednesday. Then obviously six county on Thursday. We've got a busy week. Busy week. Yeah, good. It's yeah. kind of how it usually goes. Yeah. You go a whole week or two with nothing, and then you get blasted. The no kidding. The, the meter is, is installed, and you know, I've seen the email. You can go on the dashboard yeah, and see the usage. That's uh, that, that, it's. I haven't quite yet figured out the dashboard and what I'm looking at. Looks like somebody's heartbeat is pretty <laughs> erratic here. <laughs> you just buy one of those little monitors you put your fingers on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what about uh, any more from the DHS? No, they they've we, got they've got they get the, the tour road of they've got that that was in the and then got back to that. Any news on when? Any news on when we can get an update on public health that the community could hear? Yes, Chris is on the agenda. I think it's in a couple of weeks. Great, thank you. And next week, is Barb is on the agenda to talk about the road at the messy property. Okay. See that federal money that we gave for the uh, water share? They're doing the uh, Rip wrap along oh. the cut there above above the cut they put rip wrap along the west mm -hmm. bluff there a little set of Hollands yeah it looks it looks really, really good. good yeah that's must be part of it so there's eight hundred some thousand total one in that thing so we did the we did the matching portion yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So that's right. the right. Right. All that. which needed be otherwise it was going to keep Eaten into that bluff and yeah. some of them over that thing up. End up in, I don't know if they're doing any more. Please, yeah. More to the south of there behind the John Deere. I think they're supposed to do much back in there too, but I don't know if any of them are that yet or not. If there are a couple um, meet the candidate forms coming up in October. Um, just a second, let me get to my schedule here. There's a meet and greet for any candidates at Impact Coffee from 5 to 6.30 on October 9th 
and October 15th from 7 to 8.30 p.m., a candidates forum up at the Center for Faith and Life Recital Hall at Luther College. We're not in politics here. Well, Dan and I are both running. Second. We have a motion and a second for adjournment. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? And obviously, I won't be there for uh, office hours today. Sorry, everybody. Looks. I think that probably, you know, like I said, Tuesday, uh, anyone works for me, but I'm like, Tuesday, I would end up with a mind of its own. Yeah. Still over from that. Where people got back, interviewed, like, oh, I'm going to shut down the meeting now since there's. Hey. Uh, ben, before you shut it down, there are two chat messages there that people had questions about rural waste collection that maybe if you could direct those to TJ. So he might be able to answer those or Dan Langrick, do you see those questions? <laughs> yeah, they, it's, I don't know if the person is still on. Uh, but the so all rural the first one says all rural that was you so anyone can use the landfill one it'll be just like one of the other other dumpsters so and it looks like this person who's identified as Jay is still on and that question was was a will a schedule of changes be sent to rural residents I doubt they'll be sent that I'm guessing they'll just be publicized or um, handed out here. And handed out at the sites before yeah. the change. Um, and then this other one is ND, who I don't know if that person's still on or not, but I don't see them on, but it doesn't they're... look like that person's on. They're asking if we had one person pick up all of our rural trash, are they able to bring it to the landfill? No questions. Hmm. I think as long as they have the placard and they have the uh, it's rural resident and it's bagged trash, then it would go. They could take it to the landfill. Just as like long they as could, it's just I like they could to one of the dumpsters at one of the other places. Right. But I think also um, the monitors would you know check with everybody to make sure that it's not. 12 households worth of trash right right i mean whatever the procedures the point is whatever procedures they do at the ridgeway site or the locust site will be the same thing yes. they should do at the landfill yeah thank you i just didn't want yeah. those people to think we we're ignoring them thank you yeah